Welcome to TVC Short Stories, where stream meets consciousness. Now, on to today's stories. Half a moon, half a heart. Rant. I'm sitting on my front porch, listening to the insects chirp and the distant sounds of a barking dog. Bring your animals inside people, it's cold almost everywhere right now, and I'm just feeling a little down tonight I think. For the most part I've been alright. Did some pain shopping, found out there no return policy, and now I have some outdated stuff I need to add to my collection of baggage, but other than that short episode, I've been in a good place. My kids keep me busy as all hell. My work also. I've been journaling again some nights which also helps, and I think that may be what I'm doing now but without the hand cramps lol. My ex came over today to see our child. It's been five days since he last did. And he began doing some much needed home renovations at my house. I didn't ask. But I didn't decline either. It's a wonder to me, how he has so much free time now, when just a month ago he would leave at dawn and not be back till the kids were in bed and dinner was cold. I told him I didn't recognize him anymore. He hasn't changed his outward appearance at all, but I just don't see the same man I fell in love with. He claims he hasn't changed in any way. And to that point he's probably right. I may have just lost the ability to see him through the rose-colored glasses he painted on my face in the beginning. I'm a bit sad tonight though for some reason. And my rambling is probably fueled from pure exhaustion, and chocolate ice cream, but it's helped a bit to give my thoughts to someone else for now. I'm thankful I could get them out of my head, and into the world where they probably don't belong lol. But thanks to whoever reads this. May this atrocity humor you more than it does me. Need a wake-up call, online affairs. Need support. Married four years, now four months into separation after discovering my worst nightmares were true. While there has been no physical affair, yes, I do know this for a fact given her slash our circumstances, I endured nearly eight months of being made to feel paranoid and insecure, each time I suspected her of pretending to be single on social media. I never had it in me to confront things head on because the defensiveness made me cower and back down. I did things to push her away throughout our relationship, but she lied to my face and deceived me. She'd talk to men she'd never even meet, all under the guise of a single girl just so she could get the validation she sought out because she said she wasn't getting it from me after I pushed her away. I found messages proving what I'd always suspected and presented her with them, but to this day she doesn't consider it cheating since it wasn't physical. She doesn't understand the irreversible damage it's caused. All things considered now, and after coming to terms with the damage I undeniably managed to cause, I'm having doubts about my decision because I feel like I am giving up on my vows. I have been in it and I've realized a lot about myself and understand now that I am guilty of some of the things she told me I was doing a long time ago but I just chalked it up to her placing blame on me, and never heard her out or took her seriously. I did a lot of things to manipulate and be controlling and I am only now coming to terms with it. Someone please talk me off the proverbial ledge of trying to reconcile, I just miss my partner and daydream about addressing what I know I did wrong, in hopes she would be able to do the same now that she realizes I'm serious. I know it's not too late but I don't know what to do. The fact that it wasn't physical and she didn't even meet up with these people as they don't live anywhere nearby makes me think I may have jumped the gun. My story? Advice was with a guy for seven years, got married, had a stillborn son at term in 2018, then later a miscarriage. Supported him during his mother's funeral. Helped him get a better paying job. Cooked healthier meals. All the supportive stuff you are supposed to do in a relationship. I didn't get this in return and looking back there was emotional abuse. Found out he was cheating, initially thought it was just the one woman but all his lies soon came out. 
turned out he had been cheating and on Swinger website for the whole seven years, found this out during miscarriage. Also had to go through the trauma of SDI cause he wasn't wearing protection when he said he was. No idea if this will affect my future chances of having children. Made the obvious choice of leaving, he was not the man I fell in love with, that guy was a lie. This bit isn't the problem, the problem is that my son looked so much like him. I feel so conflicted when I see him, so much love and burning hate at the same time. It's really doing my head in. Still struggling with self-worth. Need support. It's been nearly three years since I learned of my ex-wife's affair, and it is soon to be two years divorced. She divorced me one month shy of our 16th wedding anniversary. For our entire marriage she swore that she'd never leave me because her parents were divorced and she knew the devastation that would have on our three kids. She always suspected me of cheating, and often spoke of how it was the worst thing anyone could do, verbalizing extra disgust for those people who have affairs that start online. Naturally, this is what she later did. I was as shocked and hurt as you'd expect, but when faced with the reality of losing her, I realized that I did love her and believed in her. What I couldn't believe was how I was the one willing to fight for our marriage even though she was the adulterer. It wasn't like the movies where the one who cheats is all apologetic and scared of losing their partner, she kept seeing the guy and basically said you had your chance, and proceeded with the divorce. I admit to my mistakes, but the problems in a marriage are caused by both people. She had suddenly become someone I'd never known before, showing no emotion or sadness. She just wanted me gone. I still cannot understand how I could still love her, but she felt nothing for me no matter how much she hurt me. How could I not eventually believe that there is something wrong with me? She obviously knows me, yet she sees no value in me whatsoever to this day. If I could just cut her out of my life it would be manageable, but because we have kids, I have to maintain a relationship with her. When I go to one of my kids games or something, and she ignores me like I'm a stranger, it makes me feel that hurt all over again. If I dare express it to her, then I'm mentally unstable and I need to get over it. She has a new boyfriend, now and it feels like I never existed. I was nothing special, I'm easily replaced. She ducked me over and stole 20 years of my life, and I still have to bear all of the emotional burden because I am apparently not worth being sad over. How the duck do I just be okay with that? She has suffered no consequences for her actions, and that makes me feel even more like I'm irrelevant. Why not be selfish and shit on people if there's no consequences? I have suffered so much, and if I want a relationship with my kids, then it's just going to continue. Of course, she did this when I'm in my mid-forties and I've developed a dad bod, and my looks are rapidly fading, which just makes me think that my physical appearance played into it. Mixing that with the lack of self-esteem from being so easily discarded, and I can't even think about trying to date. I really am ducked and I only see more frustration and pain ahead. I don't know what to do. Really struggling with reconciling when my WS is polyamorous. Need support. So my WS, who is polyamorous, I am not, and I were talking yesterday and they said at what point do I start doing things for myself rather than accommodating for you. That hurt a lot more than I care to admit. I know I'm holding them back being mono when they're poly but polyamory is never an excuse to cheat. I feel like I've been lumped with two leviathan tasks of getting over cheating and coming to terms with WS wanting multiple relationships. I want to work on it but the more I try to heal the more I feel my WS is just going to decide it's not worth the effort. I cried myself to sleep last night wondering if it's worth putting in the effort when my WS just wants to push it all to one side and live their poly lifestyle. Advice gratefully received. Advice. Background, I moved to the city in March on my own just as the world descended into chaos and spent many months feeling pretty isolated. 
I then met my partner in July this year when lockdown rules permitted. Story, after a wonderful few months together in December I found out he had cheated on me in September with a woman he had then introduced me to, what was he thinking? It had been a drunken one night thing which he regrets blah blah blah. As I was coming to terms with this revelation, a week later I discovered I was pregnant. For the avoidance of doubt, it's his child? And I, unlike him, have been abiding by rules of both monogamy and social distancing. I am in a city hundreds of miles away from home, living in a flat I have bought, pregnant, facing the choice of trying to get over the infidelity and moving on. Or leaving him and being a single parent but quite literally on my own, no family or close mates nearby. What should I do? Happy to answer questions. This is how I do it. Untagged. I got so much love from my last post and a lot of I don't know how you do it. Honestly, this image says it all. HTTPS colon slash slash imager dot com slash gallery slash three kvo zero if you don't want to click the link it reads, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Martin Luther King Jr. the first never been one to hold a grudge and given enough time I do eventually forgive. I just don't have the time or the patience to dwell on all the wrongs in my life for extended periods of time. Of all the toxic and manipulative people in my life my only takeaway from my experiences with them is it must be utterly exhausting to be them. I refuse to be that person. I hope this helps someone out there. While I'm here, a quick update, divorce papers were mailed out and are pending delivery. It's now a wait and see situation. What he decides to do next should be interesting at the least. I have not received word about the phone, and it has been more than a week and no payment had been made since his account is currently negative. So I will be stopping by the phone store sometime this week to see what I can do about my phone. Hoping for the best. It still blows my mind that he managed to spend over $3,600 which in two days. I've come to terms that I will most likely see any of that money, but I still pray. He may have screwed me over royally but I have all my bills paid, despite the hyperventilation I experienced while making the car payment. And my new beginning at school starts tomorrow so my life is definitely taking a much needed and gigantic step forward, unlike him. This concludes today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. All the best wherever you are. Cheers.